Hey there everybody, welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Final Mix bonus time. Last time we cleared up the mini games and a few other things here and there. This time though, I think it's about time we take on those secret bosses. And I'm waving over Olympus Colosseum, but I'm not going there first. And before I do anything else, I want to open up the uh, mission, doesn't matter which world. Because I just want to show off. I completed all three missions for deep, like to fly to deep jungle as that unlocks a trophy. Like completing mission three on a world unlocks a trophy. Same with one and two, but you have to get one and two to get three. Anyway, getting into the bulk of this episode, I am going to head over to Neverland. And just after I land, I will show my stats quickly. Just so you guys know where exactly, I, where exactly I am at with everything. So I want to land in the cabin. Okay, so I have landed here in Neverland. And first thing I'm going to do is switch Peter Pan into the party in exchange for Goofy. Because we need Peter Pan to actually initiate the fight. And Goofy isn't as good as magic. And of course, you want your magic to be ready. And for that, I recommend in your items, if I just head over to the status so you can see what I'm looking like. Level 100. It's glorious. Anyway, my items, I have full elixirs. I recommend you have elixirs, or if you don't have very many elixirs, at least have ethers. Healing might not be an issue for you if... And, by the way, quickly, for all of these boss fights, I recommend level 80 at the very least. Even on proud mode, if you're good at the game, you can beat them at level 80. Although, if you're good at the game and you're not on proud mode, level 65 even, you might be able to do it in. Any lower than that, and you're going to have a fun time. Anyway, what I really want to do, though, is head into customize. Because I don't want... Cure, and I don't want arrow for this fight. I actually want fire, blizzard, and thunder. I'm gonna keep thunder on G, because... On, on square, I mean, because I usually have it there. And I think I'm ready. If you think you might lose to this boss fight, it is the easiest of them all, in my opinion. I recommend you leave the room and come back, otherwise you'll have to do all of that menuing again. Anyway, seems like there's something up at the clock tower. And Tinkerbell's going to take us there right now. As we are heading here, again, I might speed up the videos or the boss fights in this as they can take a bit of time. Now this one in particular I might speed up because it doesn't really change throughout the fight. But getting into the fight, first thing I want to do is lock onto the clock tower itself and cast stop. What this enemy, the Phantom by the way, is going to do is cast a spell on the clock tower. Now, when this spell is cast, a time will appear around one of your allies. Or above one of their heads. Now, when this timer has appeared, you need to either stop the clock tower, otherwise if the second hand goes round all the way, then that ally is dead permanently. Not even curing them will bring them back. First it will attack Peter Pan, then it will attack your other party member, and then you. If it gets you, you're dead. That is it. That is the end of the battle. So that's the main gimmick. But the Phantom, how do you attack it? You will see this orb that appears underneath it. Now this orb will have four colours. Although technically one of them's not a colour, it's a shade. Either blue for blizzard, red for fire, or yellow for thunder. And if you need to do melee attacks, it will appear white. And your allies will actually hit it if it's white, occasionally. Anyway, so... This other attack you want to be very careful of is when it heads to the... Like, when it flies in front of the, one of the clock faces. This is when it will spawn a nasty orb that will really hurt you. But if you just fly around the edge, you're perfectly fine. It won't even touch you. 
Anyway, all you want to do is keep attacking the orb. After three hits, it will disappear for a little bit. And I need to cast stop on you again. You want to keep casting stop on this. Anyway, you can see what I mean about this boss fight. In particular, out of these boss fights being really slow. It doesn't change as the boss fight goes on, and... It, it's just kind of boring, because you deal so little damage to it as well. All you need to do is understand the gimmicks, and then you can practically fight this boss fight at any level. Of course, like, having the stronger spells from, like, the Hades Cup definitely helps, but... And having more magic, but you should be fine, like, really, any level. And you can fight this boss fight at if you know what to do. So I'm gonna use this time to show off what happens when the time runs out for one of your party members. So Peter Pan is just about to run out of time. There it goes. Peter's Pan, Peter Pan's heart is moment like temporarily taken by this guy. The clock face will go around yet again. And once it makes its way around, it'll start working its way through Donald. But with that, we have taken care of the Phantom. And for completing that, we have access to the Clock Tower again. So if you need any of those rewards from those doors, then you can grab them again, which is nice. I don't really have any need to anymore. But that is one of those three really tough heartless that did come from the final keyhole. And for completing or defeating the Phantom, Stop has been upgraded to its final form. And with that, our magic is now at its best. All our spells are now level three. Nice little trophy because I defeated the Phantom. And doesn't look like the doors will open until you actually leave and come back. But that is why they moved the dimensions. Before I head on to the next boss, I'm sure you, at this point in the game, like just getting an upgraded stop, that's pretty boring, really. We need something better than that, so I'm gonna pay a visit to Merlin. So here I am, on Merlin's table, with his tea. Sorry about that, Merlin. Oh, okay. Now Donald's on your table. For coming, for talking to him, blah, blah, blah. Once you have all your spells upgraded to the third level, you obtain the Dream Rod. And now that's actually all the staves. I was wrong in the last episode. Never mind. There we go, Master Magician. And of course the Dream Rod is that rod we saw back in the first dream sequence that we got rid of, actually. Raises max MP by 2, but it's very weak compared to Save the Queen. So, on to the next boss. And I'm trying to go up... Oh, I didn't mean to leave the house. Trying to go up in difficulty, roughly. So the next boss is in Agrabah. So I will see you guys there in Aladdin's house. Here I am in Aladdin's house. And we have Donald and Goofy in our team. Not going to bring in Aladdin for this one. But I do need to change a few things. One, I want to change my spells back. To be defensive... Arrow and Cure are a must-have for a lot of these boss fights, and I like Thunder because it's a it's an easy hit against a boss. No need to aim. But also items, I recommend you equip Mega Elixirs as opposed to just your usual elixirs. So I'll just do that right now. And apart from that, I don't think there is really much to worry about. Now, I don't think I'm going to go through all these Mega Elixirs. And I'm hoping not, because I need them for a boss fight later on. Or, I might need them. Anyway. Once you are ready, just come over here, talk to Carpet, and he will take us to the desert. Flying through the desert this time, though. We have this giant Heartless. The third of the Heartless that came from the final keyhole. This is Curse Zisa. Caesar? I'm pretty sure it's Zisa. 
Anyway, I want to cast an arrow very quickly as our magic is now sealed when he is carrying these two orbs. I'm sure you can guess what the gimmick of this boss fight is. First we go from the boss fight where it's all magic and now no magic. Well, not quite. We'll see that. Anyway, so Kurt Zeezer has these massive blades that cover a lot of distance, but these orbs do drop health, which is nice. Now, I recommend you cast Arrow, or even Tinkerbell, like summon Tinkerbell if you can, because then you can keep getting health. After destroying both those orbs, so go crazy and attack his head. This is when you do the real damage. I'm just mashing the X button a lot, and like, you can probably hear it. But this is when you do all the damage. You can see he has a whole, an orb in his mouth. But he does attack, so be careful. Anyway, now he will cast this magical shield. And this will protect him from all physical attacks. And you have to use magical ones to get rid of the shield. Now, I recommend, again, you can cast arrow at any time at this point now. Thunder is very useful. Again, easy hits against bosses. And if you do run out of magic and you don't want to use an item because you have like full health or something, just hitting the shield will drop magic orbs. And Donald and Goofy will do a pretty good job at doing that for you if you don't want to hit it yourself. Cure Donald, cure me. Come on. Donald, what are you doing? Donald. Donald, cure me. What kind of an ally are you? Goofy, give me more magic. Thank you, Donald. Goofy, what are you doing? Come on. Oh well, let's go. Now, I want to be very careful to cast Arrow quickly before this phase is over. Maybe a cure if I can. Or maybe I can... T oh no, I can't two-cycle that. And I don't need to cast an Arrow, actually. But attacking the orbs again, this is where the boss fight can get very dangerous. But while I am finishing this boss fight, interesting bit of trivia for you. Kurt Zeezer is actually a very interesting boss in that its name is interesting. So back in, like, when this game was being developed, Square Enix, or whatever it was called then, or this is, okay, just a moment. This is the attack that is very dangerous. You want to dodge roll to the side of the more vertical looking spins, and then just jump over the horizontal ones. That is a very dangerous attack. That is what has killed me so many times in the past. Anyway, so Square Enix held a competition for some people and the winner got his name in the game, Kurt Zeezer. I thought that might be interesting, but with that, we win! Slow death animation. <laughs> there we go. Carpet comes to save the day. And with that, that is the last of the Heartless defeated. And for compl oh, just not completing. And for defeating him, we get. Zantetsukan, a new ability, and we get Ansem's Report at 11. Great. Ansem's Report 11, of course, is a new part of the Ansem's Report, only in Final Mix. And we get achievements. We also get one. If I open up my journal and head into Heartless... No, sorry. It's characters. Well, you can see, we have all the Heartless now with the Phantom and Kurt Zeezer. Z I, I can't pronounce that S like an S after the Z from Zisa. It's so hard. Anyway, next up, the Olympus Coliseum. Now I'm gonna hop between this world. Actually, no, no, I'm not. For some reason, I thought there was another boss fight when there isn't in a different world. Anyway, I, I mean, I know there is one in Hollow Bastion, but I meant another one from there. Landing in Olympus Coliseum in the only place we can, of course. It's about time we find out what those question mark, question mark, question mark cups are. So, not running to the door that leads away. I think it's time 
we fought these two very interesting challenges and going into these I urge you to unequip any mega elixirs you might have equipped and p bring on some normal elixirs. The reason being for this is because you will not have your party members for the for these two fights and you don't want to waste mega elixirs at least for one of the fights coming up one of those boss fights coming up which you will have your party members for. Anyway with that I think we are just uh, ready? Actually, no, I want to see what Zan Tetsukin does. Uh, so, let's go into Sora and see what that does. Oh, well, I have 2 AP. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Has a 30% chance of unleashing a finishing combo attack that can destroy a weaker enemy. I don't think that'll be very effective yet against these bosses. MP Rage, though, I do want to put that on. So, what can I take off for 1 AP? Encounter plus. I don't need that anymore. We're not fighting any enemies like that. So MP Rage is on. Now you might want to put abilities like Ars Arcanum on. I know that is a good one. But first off, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. The top set of question marks. This one unlocks after you defeat the Hades, or after you beat the Hades Cup. If I got it right. I think I did. Yes, I did. Okay, got a nice cutscene of this Titan! This one is a lot more formidable than, or it's a lot tougher than a Rock Titan. This one can take a few tries to actually deal with. This is the Ice Titan, the gold match. And you can also attack it, it's, its head is simply too high. Also, whatever you do, do not cast arrow. You have to deflect all of these icicles. As you can see, you get a lot of tech points. Great form of experience if you're not level 100 yet. But you want to deflect these, but you don't get one, you don't get the tech points. Two, you don't deflect the icicles back to the Ice Titan if you have Aero cast up. So, again, don't cast Aero. Q is your best friend, or best and only friend, really. Fire might actually be effective, but all you want to do is dodge these icicles in the ground and then guard all of the uh, these others. Now you can use different ways to deflect them, but guarding is the best and the easiest because this just lasts for so long. Also, you don't want to be down around the Ice Titan's feet because when it moves around, it makes massive shockwaves. Although they do appear bigger than they actually are. Here we go, and if I deflect enough of these at the ice time, you can see some of these miss, if can de depending on what attack's going on, but there we go. He deflecting enough back at him, about three quarters of a health bar, or half of a health bar, I think. And it will knock, like, it will stun him. Wanna keep on top of my curing, curing. And he goes crazy with these. And I recommend you just dodge these, because, like, there's a lot to do. The last couple you might try and guard. Now, at this point, he has some brand new attacks. Every time he... he okay, one, he'll drop these ice boulders on me. You'll see that one quite a lot. I, you might be able to guard them. I swear I've guarded them once before. I don't know how. I'm not going to try it, though. Anyway, he also breathes ice. This will create icy patches on the arena, and if you manage to stand on one of them, you will slip over and become stunned, although I don't think it does damage. Getting hit by the breath does, though. Also, every time he moves now, those icicles he's shooting at me will go crazy, like they will spawn all over the place. There we go, that was a good one. So Ice Titan really isn't too bad, learn the attacks, learn how to dodge them, and learn the patterns of the icicles, oh that sucks, learn the patterns of the icicles coming towards you, because like you can tell like what the patterns are, like if I look at this, I know there's going to be three coming after it now, or this one here, although it's a bit crazy, I know at the end there's usually some directed straight at me, depends on what it is. So yeah, learn the pa this one here. 
Like, if I know there's only a few going everywhere, they're pretty crazy. Also, if you jump while he's breathing ice, you will usually get some of those other ones. I'm not deflecting anything. Although, he must be close to a stun soon. Anyway, you just want to keep on top of this. Again, I recommend staying in an opposite corner. I say again, but it's the first time I've said that, I think. And I also recommend not really moving around the arena too much at this point, as every time he moves, icicles will spawn randomly, and it just makes it hard to deflect them. And better to just dodge them. Ah, oh, barely got, got barely any there. Whoops, I slipped. Come on! There we go. Here we go. Attack! Go, Sora, go! Go, go, go! So, being level 100 makes a massive difference compared to when I tried this. And, uh, yes, a little, a little bit of thing, like, I regret saying to you guys. I did practice these boss fights, although not at level 100, it was more like mid-80s, I think it was. I did practice these boss fights to see how I was going. By the way, that was Ice Titan's strongest attack. When he starts casting that, you can roughly tell because... Like, you can roughly tell it's a pretty slow start to it, like that. So that's how you can tell. I recommend you just move to a different part of the arena. And if I stand there and do nothing, that will drop on me. But again, be careful. And keep on top of curing so I don't die. And that's how you get hit. Watch out for the boulder and deflect. Boom. That's how it's done. Going good. I need to cure after this. Oh, that was terrible. There we go. Cure. Cure on the ground because being in the air doesn't do it for long enough. Super glide. Very useful, actually. Super, super glide. Anyway, here we go, here we go. So, I haven't actually been Ice Titan ever, so this will be a first. Although I did, like, get to a point with Ice Titan in, on my practice fight where, like, I, I was like, yeah, I can beat him. But I knew I could, like, it's like, yeah, I know I can beat him, even though I still died. So, like, I'm, oh, I barely got to attack him there. Okay, just want to run for this, from this. Because it's just a whole bunch of ice that I can't really do much against. And, ah, oh, those boulders get me every time. Okay. What's coming? Boom. And I can't guard those. Okay, heal's very good. Leaf Bracer is such a great ability. It means you're invincible, invulnerable while healing. However, when using an item, you can take that one bit of damage and die. So be careful with the items, use them early. Almost dead, almost dead, come on. One more stun, one more stun. One more stun! Come on, Titan! Oh, I missed him. There we go. No, that didn't stun him? What? Here we go! This is it! This is it! This is it! This is it! Come on! Ice! No, no! Oh, that was so close! Ice Titan defeated! Wow, that's actually great.
I've never seen that cutscene before. I love that. That is awesome. And for doing that, we get the Diamond Dust, and that is the last of the Keyblades, I do believe. Uh, that's not the trophy I want to see. Although, yes, I do. Great trophy. Where's the other one? Please tell me that's all the Keyblades. Well, Diamond Dust, anyway, has the most magic in the game. Raises max MB MP by 3, or maybe tied most magic. Although the strength is dreadful. But still, great magic. Good for a few different bits here and there. Um, I guess I get another Keyblade after some other fights. So, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, number two. This one. This fight. Hope you guys are ready. This is... P quite possibly the biggest fight of the first Kingdom Hearts game. Now there is of course another secret boss fight in Final Mix only, but this is in the original PS2 version as well. This dramatic reveal, it's very dramatic, although if, if you're not into Final Fantasy you might not know, but this music might help. Or, actually, the text box that's about to appear. Here we go. This is Sephiroth. Quite possibly one of the hardest boss fights in the game. No, this is the hardest boss fight in Kingdom Hearts, or at least in the original. Sephiroth is no joke. Seriously. I recommend you stay in the air, but only just above him. A lot of his sword slashes like that, as you can see, I should be having arrow around. That was an arrow. It's weird, if you mash triangle right after mashing X for cure, you sometimes use cure twice. Anyway, if you time things well, then you can actually attack him right after these fire pillars. And, it's, and get a little bit of a combo off on him. He does teleport away, but you can lock onto him before he reappears, to let, so you know where he is. Anyway, I've only just started to actually dig into the health bars. And this boss fight. I'm very worried about this one. This could take me a few tries. I've only beaten him once ever. And that was such a crazy fight when I actually did beat him. Okay, so this attack. Oh boy, that attack is the one you want to look out for the most. That is... I'm, I'm pretty sure it says Descend Heartless Angel. Although it also... People have mainly interpreted it as Sin Harvest Angel, I believe. Which is a lot darker. But... You really want to attack him. Just hit him once while he's doing it. Has to be a physical attack though, no spells. He's very resilient to magic, I believe. Sorry about that. Back to the fight! Anyway, this is a crazy boss fight. Oh, please don't distract me again. Anyway. I feel like he's gonna do... Yes, he is. Oh, don't get it off. That was close. So, after he does that waving motion with his hand, he will cast it. At that point... Oh, that was a nice time to... Oh, what? What? Oh, I did not expect him to do this now. Oh crap, this is his DM. Meteors everywhere. They, they hurt. I'm almost dying because of it. Yeah, they're not in game in real life. Yeah, come on, giant meteor, I always forget. I can't beat him. Come on, come on. I'm so close, but I'm not really. No, 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 no. Oh, oh I thought he was, I thought he was doing to send Harless Angel. Heal, heal, I'm gonna use an elixir actually. Okay, he's gonna do it now, he's gonna do it, I know he is. Next time he teleports, no. I know he's gonna do it soon, I'm ready. I'm staying in the center so I can get to him. And fire pillars, I did not expect that this late. Come on, come on, I'm dying, please. I'm holding my breath for so long and I can't do it. Come on, Sephiroth. 
So everyone thinks he's powered up a bit like Cloud. And it's actually interesting how I say a bit like Cloud. They're from the same game, but this is crazy. Come on. I'm almost there. Come on. Die. Oh. No, no, no. You're not getting that off. And yes. Yes. <laughs> Sephiroth is down. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Again. The, another reason why that boss fight is so hard. It is so quick too. You need to react so quickly. I never actually managed to explain or show off what Descent Heartless Angel does. If he gets the waving motion off, then, oh, Saw obtains one winged angel and Ansem's Report 12. Now that is every Keyblade, I'm certain. There we go. I have defeated him before once in practice, but... That was even crazier than that run, like seriously. Anyway, the attack, Descend Heartless Angel, leaves Sora with one health and zero magic. One hit and you're dead, you cannot cast Cure, so no Leaf Bracer for you. You need to ca- you need to get an Elixir off. Crap! <laughs> Woo! I, I need to take a breather from that. I'll see you guys in Hollow Bastion for the final fight. Oh boy! I've been looking for you, as have I. As long as you exist, I'll never wake from this nightmare. You're my darkness. Um, I'm a part of you, am I? Then join me in this eternal nightmare, untarnished by light. Okay, so here we are in Hollow Bastion, in the castle chapel, we have this portal, before I go onwards, <coughs> I think, I think that Sephiroth fight really took a lot out of me. Anyway, I want to bring in all my Mega Elixirs, and I definitely will be using some in this fight. And this fight, I've never won this fight, ever. But unlike the Ice Titan, this one is hard. Very hard. In fact, it can be harder than Sephiroth. And even in my practice runs, I didn't get near it. And what am I doing? Uh, Mega Elixir. There we go. Okay, so this one... First of all, let's check out that Keyblade we got from Sephiroth. It reduces MP by 2 and it has very little power, but it's good with criticals. It's actually a much weaker Keyblade than pretty much anything we've come across. And for that reason, Wandering Angel is actually a nice challenge if you want to fight tougher boss fights at very low levels. Anyway, with this portal here, there are some things that these K 
characters would tell us about. Could the appearance of that gate be a bad omen? Because they all think it is, like, from Ansem or something. But it isn't. It's something else. Something we've never quite seen before. So why am I running away to the lift stop? That is because I want to save the fact that I did bring all those Mega Elixirs into my inventory. Because I could easily die from this boss fight. Now I could have with Sephiroth if he did get that Descent Heartless Angel off on me, but he didn't, thank goodness. This boss fight though. I've died multiple times, haven't even got close to defeating him. And I haven't actually seen any of this boss fight online, like in like videos. So this boss fight is kind of half blind. Sam? What's that supposed to mean? Here we go. This is the unknown. First thing I'm gonna do is roll off to the left and cast arrow. And that's because whatever attack he does there is a bit random. Now I just want to spam attacks at him because deflecting with counter is actually, I found quite a good method as I'm thrusting in Donald and Goofy to cure and keep my, oh crap no. Why has he used this so early? Uh, okay, that was so close. That attack is, that's the one I'm scared of, that shock attack. And that is the first instance of what I'm going to call a reaction command. I say first instance because this boss fight, it's very unique. This character, if you've played Kingdom Hearts 2, you might recognize who this person thing is. Actually, in this game, it is just listed as unknown. That is all this character is listed as, and it can be quite tough. I'm going to use Mega Elixirs to keep my party members alive, and I want to keep my health high in case he uses that at shock attack again. When he uses that, I want to run away from him and just focus on... Oh, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. Crap, what's going on? I haven't seen this. No, 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 leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay, okay. Think oh wow, those lasers are now blue. So many lasers. I want to cast arrow. I'm going to use a mega elixir. Play it safe. Keep it going, keep it going. These orbs are very deadly too. He can disappear, he can do a lot of things. Come on. Last health bar, please. Please. Okay, come on. Come on, don't ruin this. Don't ruin this for me. Don't ruin this for me. No, 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 no! No, don't you dead! Run away. Come on. No. 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 Come on. Come on. No, no, no! No! Okay. Death one. Death one. That is why I keep my allies healed. That is why I keep staying at full health. On any of those four, the top three of your command menu and the triangle button, they will all display shock. 
And there will be one of them that says release, actually, out of those four. The one that says release will of course release you from that attack, which constantly does damage. If you hit shock, you take a lot of damage. And... It will pre pretty much kill you very quickly if you're not too careful. Now, whatever says release is random, but and it does change. Now, it is quick at the start, and it slows down, which is why I recommend running away, so you don't get hammered by this mysterious figure. But, that was so close, and he had to ruin it right at the end. Oh well, take two, take two, heal, heal. Again, this boss fight I, fa I find is very random. Again, he's using it again. Okay. Okay. No, it missed. No, no, no. Oh, I almost had that one. Again, I've, I've, had, I've had barely any practice with this fight, so that attack in particular, I, I'm very bad at it. I don't know why. Like, it's, I reckon it's that random nature. The reason why I don't try and move down the command menu to get some of the other releases is because I have to be really quick at that, and if I miss, it just moves to the top again. So I find it's easier to just cover my two, like the top two, like triangle and X, and just mash one of those buttons the moment I see it change, one of those change. The triangle one, you can start to see it change before it actually does change, and usually he spawns orbs immediately, but he hasn't been doing that lately. Oh well, this is it. Third, third time's the charm. Come on. Come on. Don't need tech points anymore. No. No. Okay. He's doing it at a, a consistent time every time. There we go. Heal, heal, heal. Heal. Okay. Okay. Actually, just... No. Not magic. Just straight up Mega Elixir. There we go. An arrow. Okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. 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 Doing some more damage to him this time. As long as he doesn't use shock. That attack really hurts me. Thank you, Donald. And when he's going around the room shooting these lasers, it's really annoying because it's hard to actually hit him when he's doing it. The orbs are good, except he can actually spawn the orbs so he's inside of them, which is also bad. Oh, he's right on the edge. That's okay. That's a bit harder. I should cure, cure, cure. I don't trust this. You can tell when he does shock because it goes right next to you. Don't scare. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. No. There we go. Okay. Okay. And Mega Elixir. Keep it going. Keep it going. Two bars. Two bars. Okay. He's gonna power up soon. With the laser. Oh, the fire laser. No, still not yet. Or maybe it's like after I do damage here, I reckon. Heal, heal, heal. I don't trust this. Stay on my health. Okay, here we go. Powering it up. Last bar of health. Alright, oh, lasers. I forgot about this attack. And I don't have any of those thorns to avoid. Oh, it seems those lasers only face one direction. Anyway, uh, Mega Elixir. Okay, attack, attack. Go, go, go. And he, he has very wide attacks, and I swear, it's almost as if he he aims to... Come on! No! No, no, no! Don't you dare! Come on! Come on! Come on! Please! No, 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 no! No, no, no! Stay away from me! I hit that! I hit that! No, no, no! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her again! Mega Alexa! Come on! Come on! Just everything! Come on, die, 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 die! Ah, come on! Please. Please. Come on. Come on. First time. There's always a first time for everything. No! Not again! Not again! I missed. There we go. Oh, come on. Just let me kill you. Just let me kill you. You're almost dead. Ah. Uh, no! He's... No, no, no. Oh, crap. No, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. No, no, no! I'm not dead! I'm not dead! I'm not dead! I'm not dead! Come on! Come on! Crap! This is... Crazy! 
He's doing the shock so often. No, 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 no. Yes! Yes! Yeah! Oh, crap, I did it. I'm, be, I'm gonna be quiet in case cutscene. <laughs> We get an EXP necklace, and we also get... Where's my controller gone? Ansem's Report 13. The unknown has been defeated. He who doesn't exist. I am leaving this portal. And with that, we have completed Jiminy's journal. 100%. All of the trophies coming in right now. The portal is gone. I am saving my game! Oh crap! Now, oh, I didn't. Actually, no. Saving on this file is fine. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh crap. Ah, I did it! I did it! That is the first time I have ever completed the K Jiminy's Journal in Kingdom Hearts 2. And where's the new characters? Ice Titan is in characters 2. And in characters 1, we have Sephiroth. And we have question mark. Unknown. A mysterious figure who appeared in Hollow Bastion. We will find out about him a bit more in Kingdom Hearts 2. Golden Mickey symbol. It's glorious. But we did get some Ansem reports. So I'm going to read through these right now and then cover some of the PlayStation trophies afterwards. As well as a couple of other things that I'm not gonna do. Cause they're boring. And not fun. And I don't like them. And Jimmy's Journal I believe is a 100% completion. Anyway, Ansem's Report 11. Opening the door to a world's heart causes its worlds to crumble. These fragments are seen as shooting stars. This explains why these gummy blocks can travel freely to other worlds. I know the catalyst of this collapse, the appearance of the Heartless. However, it will take time to search out the world's doors, and to retrieve each heart. Furthermore, the doors can be locked using a keyblade, making the heart forever unobtainable. I must take action before the wielder of this key appears in this world. If the princesses and the Keyblade are connected, they should resonate. I've chosen a girl. I don't know if she holds the princess's powers, but I will find out. She may lead me to the key bear. I shall set her free and observe. Number 12. The body is gone. The heart should have returned to the heartless. And yet, nothing. This one is like any other. Its memories remain and it has yet to take the form of a heartless. A close eye must be kept on the situation. Much is unknown. To get to the realm of darkness, one must go through the doors of Kingdom Hearts, the place where the world's hearts... world's hearts... ah, connect. Beyond this world is the place in which darkness reigns. Details shall be archived in a separate report. I don't think they ever are. 
There are many worlds in existence, some of which we know nothing about. The world in which we live, the realm of darkness, the realm of light, and the world in between, wherein lies true nirvana. And Ansem's report number 13. Where does the body go when it separates from the heart? If the soul remains within the body, is it still considered to be deceased? When the heart returns to the heartless, the physical form disappears. But that is merely true in this world. Perhaps the body exists in another form, in another world. If that is the case, then it is possible for one to exist in two worlds. A being that is neither darkness nor light. Belonging nowhere. Abandoned by its heart. A mere shell of its former self. The relation between the heart and the body is complex. However, I am certain that if your self exists here, then by definition, the other cannot truly exist. The other, the one which does not exist, shall be dubbed nobody. So you might be able to tell those last three, 11, 12 and 13, seem very different in terms of how they were written compared to the first ten. They seem to focus more on this nobody as opposed to the heartless. Interesting character this Ansem is, or whoever it may be. We will find out more in Kingdom Hearts 2 yet again. But with that, I think it's time we take a look at the PlayStation trophies. So I'll quickly open up them. Now I don't have all of them. This first hidden trophy is the Platinum Trophy. And I have Proud Player. This one I believe you just complete the game on Standard Mode. This one you complete on Beginner, of course. Completing the game without changing equipment, I recommend on Beginner. Same with completing the game without using a Continue. You can also, whenever you do die, just simply load a file or turn the console off and get annoyed and then come back in the next week or so when you are less annoyed at it. This one I believe you get for, def for beating the game in under 15 hours. Which is actually pretty easy if you skip all the cutscenes. Anyway, we have all of these. These are basically for completing everything in Jiminy's journal as well as fighting all the bosses and all of that, but we have to get sword to level 100 Hence why I did that Open 100 treasure chests. You'll probably get that casually same with getting money and killing heartless Then we have sealing the keyholes including 100 acre wood all of the Jiminy's journal sections Synthesizing the items and another one, this is probably the worst one in, to get in my opinion, getting all gummy ship blueprints. I believe you need to clear all the routes on level 3 to do that, which is really annoying. Anyway, for the gummy missions we also have shoot down over 2,500 enemies in the gummy ship, modify a ship, clear all the gummy routes, which we, you might get casually as long as you do all the worlds. Although you might not do the one in between Atlantica and Neverland, or Halloween Town and Neverland, so don't forget that, that one. And then clear gummy ship m mission 1, 2, and 3. For clearing, like to clear 3, you need to clear 1 and 2 anyway. Then one of this, like Oathkeeper, getting the Oathkeeper, seeing that cutscene with Kyrie, you can't miss this one. And then just getting all the weapons for each of the three characters. So that is it for all that, all that Kingdom Hearts 1 has to offer, I do believe. So really, the gummy ship stuff is the only thing I'm not covering, and I'm not doing multiple playthroughs for you guys. That'd be just crazy, unless you want to sit through another 15 hours or more. You don't, though. I know that. So with that... That concludes the bonus episodes of Kingdom Hearts. I will see you in my next LP, or Kingdom Hearts 2 if you don't care about any of the next LPs until that one. Because whenever I do Kingdom Hearts 2, I will. Could be a long time, but I will do it, and it will be fun. Trust me. Anyway, 
The next LP is a little bit darker. Well, not really. It's a bit more realistic, let's put it that way. I say realistic, but it really isn't either. Uh, it looks a bit more realistic. I don't know. I like it. It's one of my personal favourite trilogies. I'm not doing the whole trilogy, but I'm doing the first one. And you'll see more when that comes out. Anyway, with that, this has been Spiling Helix. I'm signing off. Bye-bye, everybody.